This is a Ekman Fine Art Project Lesson Christmas Tree Ornament Rocking Horse. Project lessons are for learning acid-free fine art cast paper sculpture using the Ekman method. You can find them on our website at ekmanfineart.com. Here in your project lesson kit, you'll find paper, bonding agent, hanging devices, and your rocking horse casts. You'll have enough paper left over to do this bonus delicious looking candy cane to hang on your tree. This is your paper. They're all quarter size sheets of EFA paper. You have a number two, a number four, and a hard paper sheet. Now if you want to make a candy cane, take about three and a half inches off the long side of that number four sheet, measure it, and use a uh, clear straight edge. Here I use a triangle and I'm going to tear it just a little bit at a time, holding it down hard and tearing it with my other hand. In your rocking horse kit, you have a lot of casts, several pieces here, but before we do the first step, there's one thing you need to do. The first thing you'll want to do is mix your bonding agent. Add a quarter cup of water to a pot on the stove. When it comes to a boil, then add the powder that's in the package from the kit. You'll mix this thoroughly in the water. Here Patty's using a wisp. You could use a spoon or whatever you want. Just mix it up real good. It'll turn milky. Then you'll want to add some ice. And the ice serves to cool the bonding agent. As it cools, it gets thicker. Have two containers ready. Add this thick bonding agent to one of the containers. After you've added the thick to one container, pour half of that thick bonding agent into the second container. Now you'll want to add water and mix thoroughly. Once you've got that thinned a little bit, you might want to add a little more water. The more water you add, the thinner it gets. Remember though, you can always make your bonding agent thinner, but the only way you can make it thicker is to add more of your thick. Okay, now for the first step, we'll want to trim out these rocking horse casts. Here I have a X-Acto knife and a cutting board. I'm working on the um, rocker, one of the rockers here. Just trimming out that that rocker, this excess material, this paper that's trimmed off of here is scrap. You'll want to save all your scrap for future projects if you do more of these because you can always repulp it and use it for something else. So if you use a exacto knife make sure that uh, I broke this one here so I'm going to wet it and push it together and dry it. I might put a little paper on there just to, to 
tangent. So the one side is fairly smooth, the other side is pretty rough, it's the, it's the cast side. So we'll wet those and burnish them down here, flatten them out a little bit. Just work on it, get it, uh, get it as smooth as you can, just with your burnisher first, and then we're going to uh, take some of that soft paper, the thin number two sheet, and tear a little bit of that off. Just use my fingers here, and I'm going to lay it over that rough side. It's the cast side. And I'm going to burnish it down. I want these rockers to be kind of uh, flat on both sides. And you can see I've got a lot of excess there. But that's okay. That'll just be trim later. And uh, I'm going to smooth it as good as I can on both these rockers. Like I said, if you use an X-Acto knife, just be careful with it. You want to have a sharp blade in there and wipe it off before you put it in on the on the knife handle because it it always has a little bit of oil residue. But you don't want to cut yourself. And parents, if your child is working on on these, supervise them. Make sure that uh, they're doing this right so they don't cut themselves. It's supposed to be fun, you're not supposed to hurt yourself. Now I have a horse, and uh, I'm going to use the blade to trim out the horse too. Keep your fingers away from that blade. It can come off of that paper really fast and then you have a cut on your hand and probably blood on your paper. And uh, paper is acid free and you want to keep it that way and you want to keep it clean so just be careful when you use a knife. Now I've trimmed out a number of these casts. The Rocking Horse Christmas Tree Ornament is probably one of the more challenging ones because of all the pieces and because of the way you want it to look. So it has, uh, of course, four legs. There are eight pieces you have on the body of the horse here of course the outside of the legs but then you have the inside of the legs too so we need to trim all those out this is the tail of the horse and we're going to trim all of these out before we put them together. So I've got uh, both sides of the tail done and I'm going to put some bonding agent on each side. It'll soak in a little bit and I'm just going to put it together pressing it together with my fingers and letting it that's where it goes there on the back of the horse before we put the uh, the tail hair on there we got to have a tail there, there it is 
now um, I've got uh, the inside of this left side of the horse I'm going to uh, wet these casts just like I did on the on the tail and push those together with my finger and thumb and work it um, all the way trying to push in it push it together and then kind of burnish the bottom of it a little bit and burnish it around there as that uh, paper kind of soaks in it gets to be a little bit easier now I've got to trim all these casts out for the inside of the legs then there's these platform pieces that uh, that the hoofs of the horse set on. We'll trim those out too. And like the uh, rockers, we're going to want to get those flat on both sides. So we'll add soft paper to both sides and burnish them and get them nice and flat just like we do on the rockers. We haven't come to that point yet. We're still trimming. I'm using fingernail scissors here to trim out those uh, little boards, little platform boards. And now I'll use a, the scissors also to trim out this, uh, this uh, inside of the leg. It's a little safer than using the knife on these small pieces, so you will just trim that out with scissors. And knife work gets to be a little more challenging for those scissors. Okay, I've got those trimmed out. Now I'm going to uh, put the inside of the back legs on. And we're going to do that for the other side of the horse as well. Now I've got those inside legs on both halves of the rocking horse. And I'm going to tear just some real thin little strips of paper. Call these ready ready sheets and this is the thin paper I'm going to tear these to seam those legs together we want to get get those together tight before we put the body together so I wet with the bonding agent and Bonding agent is pretty thin. I I like uh, put uh, the paper on and work it in with a burnisher. Kind of smooth it around as I go. And I'm going to do that with uh, the front legs, front side of the leg, back side of the leg, and then I'm going to do the back legs the same way on both sides of the horse. Now we'll dry that horse before we put him together. I want to show you a, a little trick to make uh, posts here. There's some pegs on the head of the horse and uh, down on the front of the body of the horse these little pegs are what children put their feet on and hold on to when they, with their hands when they rock that horse. So I'm tearing off a, 
a thin number two sheet of paper here in the strips just little strips here and this is uh, a real thin brass wire that I have you can get these at any hardware store it's a brass kind of a rod welding rod and I'm going to take my tuck tool burnisher that you can get on our website and I'm going to gently roll it over that wire and tuck it under the wire try to get it even before I do this you know you roll it and then tuck it that's why I call it a tuck tool burnisher this is a tuck side and a well, detail side of your burnisher and then the other side is the burnisher side so then I just kind of roll it in my fingers and I'm creating like a paper dowel like the wooden dowel that would go in in that rocking horse on both sides so get it rolled on there and that should be enough to do the rocking horse on both sides head and body so we'll smooth it and then we'll dry it now I'm going to show you how I'm going to work on these rockers. I've got this uh, one side wet and piece of paper over it and I'm going to burnish it. And then I'm going to do that with the other side too. Put a couple layers on. This will really smooth the surface of the, of the paper on both sides. There, I've got paper on both sides. And then I'm um, going to pat it down. I'll dry that. Set that aside. Here's a uh, the other rocker. I'm going to grind this just a little bit. You see I have a uh, a grinding block with that gray grinding paper that you can get in just about any hardware store. They have different courses. That, um, rough and all the way up to fine grinding paper. I don't like to use sandpaper because sand sounds dirty to me and I, I think sandpaper sometimes it leaves a residue on the paper but this gray grinding paper doesn't so that's what I use and I just work my uh, rocker on both sides with this grinding paper and then I can wet it with the bonding agent and work on it with my um, burnisher here. That gets some of that roughness out too. The other, the other rocker, I kind of the paper kind of broke, so I I put the, uh, the thin paper on first. And you'll go back and forth with these, putting paper on and um, grinding it, burnishing it down after you put it on. And then when we, you dry it, you see I tore that kind of curved, save some of that paper. Um, you just go back and forth adding layers and drying it in between and doing more paper more grinding until you have it fairly smooth 
we'll do that with uh, the body of the horse too because it's it's kind of rough too like I said this is this is one of the more challenging of the uh, Christmas tree ornaments but everybody likes the the little rocking horse on the tree it just it's kind of a cool thing to have so I'll burnish this side down too then I'll set this aside and work on the little platform boards that are sitting here and I'm going to do the same thing with those do a little grinding and then paper and burnishing and we'll get those nice and smooth too okay this is one of them it's it's about finished so a little burnishing there Times are hard to they, they get up, they kind of stick down. But uh, another layer on here, and then we'll find a way to get that up. Use my tuck tool burnisher here to get underneath it. That paper, see it, it came off. Oh, a little tedious. Now I'll be careful to just lift it by the loose ends there. Now I'll do the next one. Okay, I've uh, dried the horse and my rail there and trimmed it out um, this horse is pretty hollow inside depending on how thick your casts are I think it's a good idea to kind of fill that make it almost solid so I'm using some of the number four sheets here kind of roll it up and put it inside the, the body of that horse. This will get it a little more solid so you can uh, spread those legs apart and get them to fit on those little platform boards that are under the hoofs. So I'm going to just put some paper in there I just think it's a safe thing to do. Okay, I've got both of them, both sides, pretty much filled. Then I'm going to uh, squeeze them together. And that paper inside there will give you a little bit of. Uh, of sticky stickiness on on both sides of this horse to when you squeeze it together you're going to see some of that kind of squeeze out this is a thin sheet here number two painted on both sides I'm just going to finish filling the right side of the horse here. The butt there. And around that, where that saddle is. I'm taking some pains here to get it everywhere inside that 
body of the horse where I want it. There's the neck. And there. Okay, now I'm going to take and put some more bonding agent on the inside of both casts before I press it together with my finger. I'm going fingers and thumb. I'm going to try to register it as good as I can. And you see that just kind of squirts out a little bit, packs in there, just pressing it. And you see it kind of f f makes the horse a little bit fatter, a little cuter. Just let it go ahead and, and squeeze that out. And then you can tear it off. That'll be scrapped too, but um, got a lot of bonding agent in it. So does the uh, cast itself. We cast them with the bonding agent. I'm going to use my burnisher too to smooth around this cast. Get the horse a little smoother where the seam is. This is also seaming it the same time. You'll see there's no ears. I'm going to show you how to make those ears for the horse. We'll sculpt those. So, Working around it with my bonding agent, taking off the excess, getting it the shape that I want. You can see those legs kind of go together. So I'm going to push them apart a little bit here. I can spread them apart too from the bottom. Use my burnisher to also do that. When we dry this, that paper inside is really going to pack and uh, make it pretty solid. The, the legs will probably close up a little bit too for shrinking. We'll have to spread them again. But you can see he's standing there. One of them to Stand flat on that on those little board platforms that uh, work to make the uh, rockers line up with each other and and kind of tie everything together. So I'm just going to finish this up. I'm going to take my rockers and my base boards for the rockers and the horse and I'm going to dry it. Dress, just dry everything. And I'll show you how we do that. There they are sitting there all together in front of the fan sitting on a drying stand. And you can get a drying stand if you want on our website at ekmanfineart.com under tools. Now I have everything dried and I'm going to smooth it a little bit, do a little grinding on, uh, on all these pieces. Got the coarser on the on the block Let's see where that goes there's a notch there it's kind of visible and I'm gonna that's where the boards go 
platform for the hoofs of the horse. So I'm going to notch that out so it, it's more prevalent. I've got a, a little exacto knife there doing it. But I'm going to find where these hoofs belong. The paper shrinks a little bit every time we cast and things change a little bit so you make adjustments to get everything fitting the way it, where it should. And if you make a mistake then it's easy to fix. This is a, a finer grinding paper and I just got it folded up and uh, because I've put paper on both sides of this it is a little bit smoother than it would be normally and because I've burnished it and grinded it before. Now this is the other the other place where this uh, platform is going to be and I'll notch that out too we'll see how that works the legs on the horse can be adjusted too to fit everything so we'll just do the best we can here to get it notched out where we can stick it down when we're ready a little more grinding we want this to look like a new hobby horse or rocking horse. But if it's a little bit rough, that's that's kind of cool too. Makes makes it look a little more homemade. Smooth the bottom of that. We want the, the two sides of these rockers to sort of match, so we'll get one the way we want it, and then we'll make the other one look like the first one. Okay, here's one of the boards, and I'm getting that ready, getting it smooth on both sides. After I've grinded it, then I can burnish it a little bit. I did this with the rocker too. Getting it nice and flat. Top, bottom, and the, and the sides. And then we'll work on the horse. Okay, here's the rocking horse. You see how those legs kinda went back together. So we'll, we'll split those apart. It's going to take a little while for your drying on this. Maybe you want to dry it overnight. And I'm going to use some burnishing to smooth it and uh, take my knife and carve some at a little out under his head here and a little grinding smoothing with that getting the way I want it the, the coarse sand paper, grinding paper and the fine or finer. You don't have to go real fine on this because you can wet it and and burnish it and smooth it with that uh, method too. To get it the way you want. In between the legs, see that folded piece of grinding paper works well between the legs. And smooth it all the way around around that saddle, around the back end of the horse 
and the legs, the hoofs. Pay attention to the hoofs. Try to get them looking the same. Top of the head and the uh, the face of the horse. Now I'm going to kind of fill some of the little rough parts with with some paper. On the, on the bottom especially needs a little bit of attention here because it did spread a little bit. I'll work around the saddle where I grinded it. Got kind of a round burnisher there. These sculpting burnishers we have on our website too, but there's different art supplies that have them. On our website I have a collection of the ones that, that I like the best. They're, they got long handles and short handles. So I'm going to work on the hoofs trying to get them the same size. And I'll just work around the horse this way until I have it um, gone over pretty well. And then I'll dry it again as well as the boards and, and the rockers. Now I've got it dried and I've been working on this, smoothing it for the second time, wetting it, grinding on it. Uh, I started with the, the grinding, now I've wet it. I, I've i coated it with, with paper and uh, on, on a second step after I dried it, this is kind of moving forward on it. You have to go back and forth on this. I can't emphasize um, how much time you need to spend to get it smooth, um, to get it the way you want by just using this process of adding paper, wetting, burnishing, grinding after it's dried. Um, You'll have to do that two or three times, probably three, maybe even four times to do the, the final um, smoothing on this. So take your time. Um, it's fun. It's uh, something you want to be proud of. Now I'm going to find where that tail is going to go with my knife here and I'm going to just make a little hole so I can put that tail on. The tail is going to be covered with hair that we make so we don't have to pay a lot of attention to uh, getting it sm smooth and um, covered might want to grind it a little bit, but uh, okay, here I'm going to put an awl in there and really open it up. Find where the, uh, the legs go together and the, the kind of the butt end of the horse. I'll smooth that a little bit. Okay, just about have that the way I want it. And he sits there pretty good. I'm going to work on the inside of his mouth here a little bit and adding a little paper. This is kind of the final touches. Filling little divots, getting his mouth open and uh, working it with my burnisher. You can see I've got 
those hoofs pretty flat on the bottom. I've grinded those. I've got them shaped pretty much the same. And uh, I'm going to uh, finish him up with, uh, with this last bit of sculpting and chasing on him. before we go to the next step. Okay, now I'm finding where those pegs go on the, the legs of the horse down below. He's got some down there and then he's got some up above too. We already uh, made, the, made those pegs the body of the horse and the, or the legs and the head. Now I'm going to show you a little trick. This is that thin hard sheet of paper and what I'm going to do with this is show you how to laminate this paper. I'm going to take it off the long side so I still have paper for my candy cane and I'm going to take two strips of this the same thickness I'll measure one to the other and with my triangle I'm just gonna cut these two strips the same size now when you do this you're, you're going to double the thickness of your thin paper and you can use it for Santa's belt for the standing Santa you can use it for the ears on this horse or you can use it for the bridle of the horse now you see I'm painting this uh, bonding agent on the thin hard sheets and then I'll put them face to face and burnish them down and when you do this you want to burnish them down onto uh, a table or a sheet of uh, plexiglass or something where after you um, have it dried you can lift it up pretty easily. Here I'll just uh, burnish it down here with my burnisher and leave it on this table and when it's dry it will not have come up, it will not have shrunk and uh, I can lift it up. Now I'm going to uh, take the hard sheet of paper that's in your kit and with a triangle I'm going to cut, just eyeballing it, a strip to make the bridle of the horse a little more pronounced. So we'll take that and uh, put it around here. I've wet that horse's muzzle and uh, strip for his bridle and I'm going to uh, work it around here. The knife is a good tool to help adjust it, get it tacked down and then I'm going to, after I've got it all the way around, I'm going to cut it with my knife and adjust it right where I want it. That's part of the bridle, so we've got to finish that up.
Now I've got it uh, around his muzzle. This one I'm going to go from one side where that muzzle is around the back of the head of the horse behind the ears and to the other muzzle piece. Stick it down with my fingers and I'm going to cut that excess off too. We're going to cover this a little bit with a uh, with a little sort of a cap. So just get them to kind of touch there. Here you want a little hole for those pegs where a child would hang on with his hands behind that bridle. We'll wet this a little more and, and stick it down. Let that bonding agent soften the paper a little bit where it'll stick. Now I'm going to cut this end off with my knife. Now the, the last bit of the bridle is sort of the head strap and it goes just in front of the, where that peg is going to go and uh, kind of close to where those ear holes are and we're going to put that one on there too. Now I've got it cut the size I want and I'm just going to after I have it everything wet I'm going to stick it down with my exacto knife and there's the bridle. Let's let that dry a little bit. Here's that uh, peg um, dowel that we made. It has a little bit little hole in it but uh, we're going to take a, a razor blade and we're just going to cut a sliver off of that because it's round it'll make a nice little finial cap like a rivet that holds a bridle together on uh, on those seams from the muzzle to the uh, the head part of that bridle. So we got four of those and we're just going to wet where they go. I'm just going to pick them up with my brush and with your burnisher kind of work it into place here. The, t the tuck tool burnisher. Now I've got those on. Put a little piece of paper over that hole and flatten them out a little bit. Now I'm taking small pieces of the number two sheet, wetting it and rolling it in my hand. These are going to be the eyes of the horse. I've um, got a few here because I'm I'm not sure how big eyes I want so what we'll do is we'll dry these and then we'll cut them in half and it'll make kind of a round eye that will go on the horse so make a few of them different sizes some smaller some a little larger and uh, and let those dry. Now I'm going to put a little piece of paper over those bridle rivets. I've worked them round. This will cover the little hole and I'll do that on both sides. 
burnish it in and press it down try to get them a little flatter okay there's my hole for the horse's tail I'm gonna wet that and uh, get the tail stuck in there we'll, we'll hang the the hair on that so that's done now we're going to make the ears of the horse this is a strip of that that hard paper and I'm just going to cut some little triangles both the same size using one as a template using my curved scissors doesn't have to be curved but I'm just doing this because I want to and now I'm going to wet both sides of this I have where the ear holes are on my horse already kind of pronounced there where I use the knife I'm going to fold these with my fingers and put the ends of the flat side of this triangle together and then I'm going to put it in those holes okay there's one push it in with my knife adjust it the way it the, to where I want it. Make a cute little ear. Bring it together. And I'll do that on both sides. Okay, I'll make sure I have a good enough hole here for the other ear before I do that. This is I laminated paper. I, I laminated my paper a little bit for the bridle and for the uh, for the ears. Uh, if you don't want to use it this thick you don't have to but uh, it's a little harder to work with because it's thicker but it might look a little better depending on the thickness of your hard thin sheet. There it is. There's the other ear. Now I'll just poke it in there and get it where I want it. Now I'm going to tear some of these thin soft sheets, number two sheets, and just work them around the ear just to make sure it's good and set in there and, and chase around it so there's no holes, so the ear meets the head the way it should, and uh, I'll just sculpt it in there using my tuck tool burnisher and I'll do this on both sides and it'll look really good when I'm done and those ears won't come out of there and since I did double ply those uh, those thin hard paper sheets by laminating them they're going to be stiff too Now I've got the ears on and I want to put these little pegs on. So I'm going to take my my rolled paper that I rolled around. That's a, really a thin wire that I used. I used a very thin wire, almost the thickness of a uh, dressmaker pen. 
you could use a dressmaker pin if you want just roll it around the dressmaker pin that that would work too you might want to take the end off before you do that I'm going to cut these uh, little little pegs the uh, same size I'll use one of them to measure the rest of them and I'll need to cut four of these okay I have my four pegs for the handles on the head of the horse and down on the body or upper legs of the horse and I'm going to uh, put them in those those holes I'll take a little bonding agent try to get it in straight put it in this lower one first and then I'm going to do that uh, the other side and up on the head as well do the head here first now I've got one side done and now I've got both sides done up up the head and down where the legs of the horse are make sure they're nice and straight there it is now I'm going to put the eyes on my horse here's that little round ball I made of paper and I'm going to try to cut this thing right in half so I'll get it started in my finger because it's kind of hard to hold um, to cut it I think I'll use my exacto knife and I'm going to cut it right in half it's nice and hard I've burnished it a little bit and I'm gonna get two sides of this and put them on where the eyes go because most horses have two eyes okay now back to my blade there it is now I'm going to put one eye there and then the other eye I'm going to put on the other side so He's a two-eyed horse, not a cyclops horse. There he is. And I can kind of adjust him with my brush head. And my knife. And get him right where I want him. And now dry because both of them have a, the head and the eye both have a lot of bonding agent in there and they'll stick down pretty hard okay for the next step let's put these uh, boards on the bottom of his hoofs I've already pre-measured made sure everything is gonna fit the way I want on those rockers I got them notched I've got the legs spread apart on the horse the way I want and I've got bonding agent on the bottom of the hoofs and the boards and now I'm putting a little bit of paper down there and hinging them pretty good and burnishing them in so they stick down hard on those boards that the hoofs are placed on do my adjustments get them right where I want them before we put the rockers on 
Okay. I'm pretty pretty close here. Might have to widen my notch a little bit. And if it's too wide, I can fill in around it with my paper when I seal it on there. So it's not a big deal. And I want it to look kind of like that. Now I've got both these rockers the same size, kind of rounded on the ends. You can fit them together. See where those notches are? I'm going to need to make the notches in the same place. And then, uh, then I can put them in place on those, on the bottom of these boards on both sides. Okay, another little notch here. Get it flat on the bottom there. Nice thing about this medium is this wet paper with the bonding agent works kind of like clay or putty. You can kind of fill in and let it dry and whittle off what you don't want or grind it. So now I'm going to put those rockers on. What both sides stick them on there. Look and make sure you have them fitting real good. Might put it on this side here and then I'll do the other side the same way. Wet the notches, place it on. You see they overhang a little bit, those boards. After it's dry, I can trim that off. I got it as wide as I want it. I guess it could have been wider, but I, I want it to look like that. So, And make sure the width underneath is the same on those rockers. And then I'll, I'll just let that dry. There it is. It's my rocking horse. I put a little pin down the back, back uh, left leg just to, to hold it to that rail a little bit, the rocker. Now I'm going to I'm going to put a dressmaker pin in the holes of these um, pegs. I'm going to drive it in with a pair of needle nose. This will hold them in really good. Nice and tight. So they won't get knocked off. I'm going to cut them off. And uh, do the same, the ones on the legs. I put them on the kind of the upper leg just above the knee of the horse. You could go all the way to the body of the horse with those uh, those lower pegs wherever you want to put them. So I'm going to do that on uh, both sides on the uh, around the head and around the bottom. Try to push them in as far as I can. And then um, I'll put a little piece of paper over top just to, s to fill that hole. 
if you want, you can. Uh, I went all the way through the leg. <laughs> um, if you want, you can take take another uh, part of that pin that you cut off and and drive those drive those in a little bit further so you don't have metal hanging out where you cut it off and then put paper over it and let it dry. Okay, I've got those pens in and the little paper over the the top of those pegs to fill the holes and finish it off a little bit. Now I'm kind of grinding off the excess after I put paper on there and uh, cleaning it up a little bit. So just doing a little bit of extra on here. I trimmed off the uh, the boards on the bottom a little bit and uh, got it all filled in. I did all that and then dried it real good so I could work on it. You don't want to start grinding and sanding doing all this what you see me doing while it's wet it just uh, isn't going to clean up very well if you do that so make sure it's dry now I'm going to work where these boards are down at the rail and uh, trimming those where it needs it and grinding around those hoofs. Get, get a little excess off of there. You want all four hoofs to look pretty much the same. Symmetrical all the way around. Front leg symmetrical, back leg symmetrical. And some more smoothing with some grinding paper where I need it. I got this guy just about ready for the next step. There he is. Now I want to put the hanger loop in here. And I'm going to put it right about where the saddle horn would be. And I'm going to make it almost look like a saddle horn. I put a little slit in there with my X-Acto knife right in the front of that horn behind the neck of the horse. And then I'm going to widen that that hole a little bit. There's my there's my loop. With uh, with my tuck tool burnisher, first I'll put a little paper in there. Then I'll take my burnisher, stick it in. Make a nice wide slot there to put that that loop in. And that loop is a little hard to hold with your finger, so a pair of needle nose comes in handy here. Just get it seated in there where you want it. And then we'll put some paper around it and uh, inside that little loop too. This is real thin paper and that will, when it dries, that'll hold that in there nice and 
tight. So there's my working around it with my tuck tool burnisher. And I'll do that on both sides, a couple layers, getting it smooth, working it in. Now we'll go to this side and do the exact same thing. Now we're just going to make a few little holes for nostrils on the horse. So we'll just make a few little holes with the X-Acto knife, keeping my hands away from that blade. Just find where that nostril needs to be and spin that knife around. Get those holes where you want them. Now I'm going to take a little bonding agent, soften it up a little bit on both sides, and kind of burnish it out, round it off with my tuck tool burnisher on both sides to give him nostrils. And now he's about ready for the next step, which would be a penetration seal before we paint him with a surface seal and then the acrylic paint. I have him just the way I want him. Put down a little paper towel. This is uh, Elmer's white glue. Just a little bit of it. About 10-15% in water. And I put it in this uh, spray bottle. And when I spray it on it, it uh, penetrates and seals. If you want, you can brush it on too. You don't have to uh, use a spray bottle. But... Uh, I'm using a spray bottle, so and you want to get you want to get it all the way on top and underneath all the way around. Get it real good. You might want to do a couple of coats of this. It's up to you. Depending on how much glue you put in that water. Um but this will seal it for the surface seal. For the surface seal, I'm just going to use some uh, titanium white Liquitex acrylic paint. All right, there it is. Put it on my palette. Thin it a little bit with water if you want. It goes on pretty flat though. I'm just using my brush water there to, to thin it a little bit. When you want to paint uh, over this with uh, your colors, this is like uh, one coat of acrylic, but then the um, the other colors will protect it even more. We're using acid-free paper that we make here, and um, when you s do a penetration seal and a surface seal, it does really protect that paper inside so it'll last basically forever. You're got getting it nice and sealed so any acid or any 
um, mold spurs or anything like that that are in the air or on your fingers um, it's it's not going to hurt the paper this is what we do when we do bronzes we'll seal our our paper with a penetration seal and then a surface seal and uh, then we can mold it and then archive that original piece because it's permanent. So paint every bit of your horse and then let it dry. Okay, now we're going to get to the fun part. I'm going to take this uh, it's a thin sheet of plexiglass and I'm going to take a portion of my thin hard paper and I'm going to tape it tape it down to this plexiglass with some masking tape I'm going to get all four sides of this taped down nice and hard this is that, again, that, that thin, hard sheet of paper. We're going to make the hair for the, the mane and the tail of our rocking horse. I'm even going to tape it down a little bit to my table here because when I paint this, I don't want it to move on me. Okay, I'm going to kind of eyeball about a two inch section of this paper with one more strip of masking tape. So I have enough paper left over to put the stripe on my candy cane when I make my candy cane get that put down nice and hard there this is uh, Mars black black acrylic paint I'll put it in my palette there and then I'm going to take a brush mix it up got it a little thin and then I'm going to paint my paper I've got a got the masking tape on there to sort of mask off where I'm painting it. And then I'll 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 do this a couple of times getting it as black as I want it. Okay, that dried a little bit. Now I'm going to apply a second coat. This hard paper really is pretty resistant to uh, the acrylic paint. Even though I'm making it thin, it, it's not soaking all the way through. But that's okay. Now I'll dry that. You can see it's it's not soaking through. And I'll dry it before I do the other side. Okay, I've got this dried. Now I'm going to uh, take the tape off.
turn it over. You can see through it so I can tape kind of where I did before because I'm going to paint I want to paint this side just like I did the other side so it's black kind of all the way through so I'm going to tape this all the way around like I did before and then here I'm going to mask off the area that I want to paint okay now I'm almost through painting the other side pretty consistent both sides and then I'll dry this side before we go to the next step show you how to cut the hair there one side and the other side dry this now okay I've got both sides dry now I'm going to remove the tape I'm going to be careful not to tear this I'm going to take the whole thing up from the uh, plexiglass and then take off all all the tape now I got the tape off and I'm just going to trim out right along the edge this black with my scissors but I'm only going to trim the ends and one side the other side I'm going to leave just a little strip there of white now I've got uh, a sheet of mat board here just a strip with tape on the other side and what I'm going to do is hinge this uh, strip of black hard paper now down now I'll trim that other end off and I'm going to start cutting this as thin as I can this will be hair for the uh, for the mane and the tail of the horse so just do this cutting it all the way to that mat board and what's going to happen is that one strip white paper will hinge all of these uh, little hairs together so they don't drop off okay I'm almost done cutting through all of this now we'll remove it and you'll see that uh, all those little hairs are still hang anchored to the uh, the little white strip so we'll release it on both sides and there's the hair for the horse's mane and tail. We'll apply those in just a little bit. Okay, now we're going to finish our rocking horse by painting it. Mars Black Liquitex, Titanium White, some permanent green, and some cad red light that's going to be our palette so I'm just going to put all 
all these on my little palette here. First I'm going to start with uh, the red and I'm going to get a small brush do a little bit of final grinding on some of that paint that surface seal that was a little rough alright I'm going to use a uh, a small brush and I'm going to start painting the bridle the white is for touch-up because I'm probably going to get a little paint where I don't want it now these are the colors I'm using if you want to make a brown for that bridle or you want to um, paint the horse different than I've painted mine that's up to you um, I will do a number of these and I will paint them different but this is the first one that I've done and I'm going to paint it the way I want and then from there I'll do some variations so get all the bridle done alright I got the bridle painted now I'm gonna paint the saddle and I'm going to uh, use a little bigger brush because obviously the area is wider again I'm going to probably need to put um, a couple of coats on here because it covers better so I'll do this on b both sides of the saddle let it dry a little bit and then I'll paint another coat on okay now I've got the saddle painted now I'm going to paint these pegs with my green paint and I'll use a tiny little brush because they're tiny little pegs Okay, do that now, and then I'll move on after I've got these done. I painted those little boards under his hoofs green too. I'm going to use some silver paint. I, I had some kind of a copper paint that I painted those rivets with first, and I don't care for that so I'm going to paint over that with uh, with the silver paint you see I painted the boards top and bottom going to need another coat on on the bottom of those boards of green while that's drying I'm going to touch up these little bridle rivets with um, my silver paint I think I'm going to like that a lot better so there's not much there just uh, four of them and uh, usually this pretty thick to paint over those I thought about using gold or brass maybe I'll do that on another one I think the silver goes with the red pretty good if I had painted it brown then I might want to put gold or brass paint on those rivets so maybe next time I'll do that okay 
now some more green. I got to touch up and paint the, the bottom of these boards again with uh, with another coat of green. I painted the round eyes on my horse black and now I'm going to paint the hoofs black too. A little bit of bottom of the hoof peeping out underneath by those boards. So I'm going to paint all four of my hoofs black. Got those done now. I'm going to go back to my CAD red light and I'm going to paint the uh, the rockers red. So, got my little brush here. And I'll paint both sides and then top and bottom. I got a little bit of green from those boards on the side of this. It's where the boards are kind of sunk into that notch. I could have painted the whole thing red, but I wanted to reveal that notch there, so I'm just going to paint it uh, so you can see the, the end of the board. Okay, I got the rockers painted. Now I'm going to move on for the mane and tail. To attach that mane, I'm going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm going to very carefully kind of move down the neck, the back of the neck. You see I'm not cutting all the way through. And again, when you use your knife, you've got to use a new blade, a sharp blade, and you've got to be really careful because you don't want to cut yourself with that knife. You can see how I'm doing this, keeping my hands away and just kind of very gingerly moving up that neck after I've gone down it kind of scored it a little bit just using the tip of my knife. Now I can go a little deeper. You just see how I did this like three times working that knife down to the saddle. Now I want to go on top of the head too because he's got bangs got a little bit of hair there too, a little bit of mane coming off the top of his head. Okay, now I'm going to widen that slot with my tuck tool burnisher. I'm just going to put it in there and, and make it nice and wide. And we'll, we'll put hair in there, we'll put the, the mane hair in there. But before I do that, I'm going to work on the tail of the horse. I'm going to tear off about oh, an inch of this um, hair. And I'm going to paint that little white strip on both sides for the, for the tail anyway. We'll do the mane a little differently. I might as well paint this tail too. Because it's white, I don't want any white peeping through when I apply this uh, tail hair. So I'm going to paint the tip there. I'm going to try to wrap it around here. It's not really sticking, so the paint isn't thick enough. Let me get my fingers a little black. Okay, there it is. I put a little bit of uh, white glue. I like that Julet um, 
embroidery glue. It it's really thick. I put that in my black paint. It it just makes it a little stickier. That uh if you use will hold glue full strength that'll work pretty good too. And uh because everything's wet you're gonna get your fingers painted but won't hurt anything you can wash it off it's just acrylic paint and I use my tuck tool burnisher to stick it down good too there's some more okay I'm going to uh, work it all the way to the top all this tail hair and uh, tidy it up a little bit there I'll have to touch up on that white and then uh, I'm gonna let that dry okay I'm gonna work on the mane now do that a little bit differently so I'll see how long I want it there going up and down the neck kinda of measuring how much hair I'm going to need, main hair, and uh, I'll go from the bridle to the saddle. This is that Jewelet um, glue. It is really, really a good idea to use this because it's thick. I'm going to put a little bit in there bonding agent doesn't work very well after you've uh, got acrylic on your paper uh, so we have to kind of move to uh, another medium here to um, to fasten these uh, these hairs to the main of the mane to the neck. So I'm going to kind of get about half of it except for that white strip. So this is measurement I'm going to do and I'm going to use a palette knife and push it down into that slot into that glue and get it down in there so it kind of sticks out and you can see that uh, the other side is still attached with the uh, with that little hinge strip so once we have the main tucked in there then uh, then I can cut that that hinge strip off okay now we'll just cut that and I'll cut down deep enough that uh, I'm releasing all those little main hairs from that that hinge strip some of them came out I'll just have to put some more in. I've got so much cut, it's it's um, it's going to be plenty to do this. Okay, now I'm going to do the the bangs, the top of the head, and the same thing. I'm just going to push them through. I've cut cut through those hairs, cut off that hinge and I'm just going to put it on the top of his head too. Okay I've got some on the top of his head and some on his neck. Now I can kind of fill in and add a little more in between there using the, the glue and uh, I'm going to put a little more on the tail too. Trim that out. 
that glue will dry clear you can get that that glue at Hobby Lobby and it, it is really a, a good good thing to have that for doing these Christmas tree ornaments there I'm gonna just kind of put a little dab right in the middle of this section of main hair and I'm gonna apply it right there with uh, where there's some missing and I'll push it through I'm just gonna add where I need it just to fill this out a little bit okay I've got uh, a lot of hair on the tail and probably going to want to put a little more on the mane use my palette knife just to tack this down. I got some loose hairs there on the tail. Now I'm going to make the mane just a little fuller by adding some more hairs to that. So cut them off of my mane hair that I've cut and You can see I just got a little, a little bit cut the length of the others. And with some tweezers I can kind of stick them where I want them. Just to fill it out a little more. Okay, I've got a lot of hair on the tail and the mane. Now there's some white tips showing through and I'm just going to take some black paint. And paint those and it'll kind of groom it too. Now I kind of trimmed off what I didn't want. You can see that. Um, now I can work on the body of the horse where it's still a little rough from painting that surface seal. I'll just paint over where I grinded it. And I'm just going to touch it up now with, uh, with white paint. Wherever it needs to be touched up, I'm going to do that. Now I'm going to paint some little black spots on him little brush here just to give him a little little more paint on that white on the rump kind of like a Appaloosa look on this little rocking horse okay I've Got him painted just about all the way around. He's touched up. I think he looks pretty good. I kind of groomed out his mane a little bit. Might need to do a little more trim there. And uh, a couple more spots. And then we just attach the uh, the string after he's all dry for the the hanging string for the tree. And here's my rocking horse, all done, ready to hang on my Christmas tree. Pretty cute. There are many more of these Christmas tree ornament project lessons that you can do. Go and check out our website at ekmanfineart.com. You can order these Christmas tree ornament kits as well as other project lessons. Just go to the menu bar here 
and click on Ekman Method. Once you're there, you'll find our paper, bonding agent, project lessons, and you'll find starter casts, DVDs, and tools. The pictures just represent the categories we have for the project lessons and ways to work in this medium. And we'll go under the Daisy Kit and we'll click there and we'll find these project lessons. There's all the Christmas tree ornaments and you can click on any of those to order. You can search and it'll come up under search from the menu bar as well. To get started, go to our website, ekmanfineart.com, to order your Christmas tree ornament project lessons or any other project lessons as well. And enjoy!